but this isn't what I signed up for. And I remember one day I had planned this event. I had gotten a facilitator. I had the panel. I have like 80 to 100 people showing up to listen to the guest speakers and, and everything. And the facilitator canceled at 6 a.m. And my boss called and he says, Tanya, you're up. And I went, no. He went, yes. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing this at all. It's Hey, how are you? Very good. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for joining me on the Break My Time pleasure. With Tanya show. Yes, I'm so, so lucky. I feel lucky. And let me just quickly tell our audience how we met. We met online, but I'm part of District 61, which I will elaborate very soon. You are you're the director of this District 61. So that's how we met. And Anyhow, wonderful things. We've met even in person, which is very exciting in the virtual world. <laughs> Without delay, let me introduce Tanya Hall to you. Number one, Tanya is a business leader. She is the vice president of Business Alliances Decisive Group. Uh, her experience managing teams and delivering results in both sales and marketing allows her to identify and deliver marketing and communication strategies that enable market success. She's also the District 61 Director at Toastmasters International, which is a nonprofit educational organization that teaches public speaking and leadership skills through a, wild, a worldwide network of clubs. The organization's membership exceeds 300,000 um, members in 2021 in more than 15,800 clubs in 149 countries. Number two, Tanya is a master communicator. <laughs> she has been a Toastmasters member since 2012. And since joining, she has been applying the lessons she learned in Toastmasters to her professional career. Um, the value that these lessons bring has allowed Tanya to create and share visions, execute projects, build and support teams. And she's also a distinguished Toastmaster uh, which is one of the highest distinction a Toastmasters member can obtain besides becoming world champion. <laughs> and finally, number three, Tanya is a woman on a mission. She is a mother, a wife, a sister, a daughter, a colleague, and a friend. And she believes that everyone needs balance in life and, and that when you find that balance, you're truly working your best um, self and you're working towards goals, achieving milestones and having fun doing it. Woo! <laughs> I've talked enough, let's get started. Tanya, can you please tell us about young Tanya and what it was like to be in her shoes growing up as a child and as a teenager, please? Yeah, uh, wow, you know, that brings me back. I grew up on a farm in a country, I have two brothers and a sister, and we would spend our days outside all day, like the dinner bell would ring and you would come home. And so I was always on the go and always doing things. I was never that kind of kid that just sat around and, and did nothing. And then even into my teens, I found that kind of started to transition that I was still always on the go. I got a job early at like 14 and started working and one job wasn't enough. I needed two jobs and I needed to be out of the house. And then I got involved in this organization called Junior Achievement, which helps teenagers practice business skills and and that got me out into networking between teens and businesses. And it was just such an amazing experience. But definitely go, 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 go. Like I need to have lots of things on my list to go with. And so that was probably, you know, me growing up. You know, if anybody looks back and says, you know, what was Tanya Hall? Well, she was into everything. She did a lot. She was always there. So that probably des describes who I was and where I'm coming from, but yeah, gives you a little bit of insight into me. Yes, it does. So it sounds to me like you were pretty out there, so you must have not been shy then. Uh, 
No, I don't think I was shy. I remember a time my dad got us transferred through his job down to New Zealand and I was maybe 12, 13 years old. I was part of Girl Guides at the time and I was in New Zealand for all of maybe 36 hours. And my parents found a Girl Guide camp for me and said, do you wanna go? And I said, sure. And it was an overnight camp. So here I am in a brand new country 36 hours in and they just dropped me off at some church and said have a nice weekend and I fit right in I I was okay and I enjoyed it and meeting people and networking and, and getting to know different people and I just think that brings so much value to one's life so no I was never shy at all I was probably the one that would go up and bring people in together and have those conversations. If I see somebody off to the side, very easy to pull them in and say, hey, let's let's get to know each other. Let's talk. Why are you here? What brings you out? Always been that way, even as a kid. Oh, that's fascinating. Because if I look back at all the world champions I interviewed or whoever distinguished Toastmasters, most of them, they started really shy and like terrified of speaking in public, but it sounds like um, you were... Or maybe you were. Uh, Hell yeah, I'll correct you. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know what? I am not shy around people. I'm shy on stage. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's a significant yeah. difference. Like completely shy on stage. And, you know, when you think back to what even got me into Toastmasters was was my shyness and it, it's different levels. I, I will say people have different levels of shyness. I can go up to a group of strangers and talk. I can go to the Tim Hortons coffee girl and strike up a conversation that makes people think, Tanya, you need a, you need more of a life. Like go do something. <laughs> but uh, when it came to presenting in a boardroom setting or on stage, I just, it's not that I froze, I could get through it, but I didn't get through it with comfort. I didn't get through it without feeling like, oh, I'm nauseous, I'm gonna be sick, I don't wanna be here, this isn't what I signed up for. And I remember one day, I had planned this event, I had gotten a facilitator, I had the panel, I have like 80 to 100 people showing up to listen to the guest speakers and, and everything. And the facilitator canceled at 6 a.m. And my boss called and he says, Tanya, you're up. And I went, no. He went, yes. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing this at all. And he's like, you'll do it and you'll do okay. Just get through it. You know the questions. Because it was true, I did know the questions. I wrote the questions for the current facilitator that was now sick. So I knew what to ask. It was just that comfort level of being able to do it. And I muddled my way through that. And uh, I'm sure I wasn't as bad as I felt I was. Mm. I think there was always that. And my boss came to me afterwards. He's like, not bad. I get that you're afraid. Now, would you go to Toastmasters? Yeah. Um, and so he was probably my encouragement to get me into Toastmasters and, and get me there. And, and so that, that was kind of what led me where I was. So I wasn't afraid to speak in public, but I just wasn't comfortable with it. Oh, great. So you asked me my next question. I wanted to ask you is that what <laughs> made you want to visit a Toastmasters for the first time? Yeah, so nothing, nothing made yes. me want you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that fear of public speaking is definitely a fear, but uh, like, yeah, my boss, my boss encouraged me. And the funny story is my boss 10 years earlier, um, when I much younger and just starting out in my career, my boss said, you know, Tanya, if you really want to go far in life, you should go to Toastmasters. But at the time I was in my twenties and having a lot of fun and going to an extracurricular activity in the evening was not on the agenda at all. Yes. And so I ignored him. And it was 10 years later that my new boss said, Tanya, you need to go to Toastmasters. So two bosses in, in that length of time and I thought okay maybe I'll listen um, not that I was in a rut in my job but I knew that I would be perfectly fine where I was but I was never going to go any further and if I wanted to go further I had to be able to hold a microphone and and hold that room's attention and mm -hmm. so that's what made me go yes oh yes and I've heard you uh, at the dis our district 61 conference at the 
Fairmont Montremblant, I heard you on stage. I was just in awe. I was fascinated. <laughs> Whenever you were taking the mic, I was on my seat, at the edge of my seat, and you do commend attention and you, you have this smile and this, you're like glowing on stage. So definitely, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you listened to your second boss. Imagine you would have listened to both to the first one, it would have been two, two decades know. of Toastmasters. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's not too late. In 10 years, it'll make it uh, two decades. So you'll be fine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So in your path to become a distinguished Toastmaster, uh, you had to write a whole lot of speeches. Uh, can you share with us how do you find your stories and your themes, please? Yeah. You know, I think stories and themes, they're personal. So each Toastmaster speech comes with objectives. And when you break it down and you think, okay, what are the objectives? The themes and the stories just kind of feed into that. And maybe it'll be, a, I mean, an interesting one was the vocal variety. So we had to do a speech on vocal variety and really bringing in vocal variety. Now that objective had me stumped for a really long time. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. They want to say it with words. They want triads. They want this. And it just, for whatever reason, created a blank in my mind and I couldn't move past it. And somebody gave me the advice of close your eyes and describe the postcard and that's your speech. And I thought, okay, I can do that. And there is nothing prettier than snow and Christmas lights. And seven minutes later, I described snow dancing to Christmas lights and music. And it was probably one of my favorite speeches. But being able to see the objective for what it truly was and bring in a story that works with it. I, you know, my kids offer me a plethora of material. Um, they have seen me go through this for the last 10 years. So everything from tantrum temper tantrums to getting a pet to graduating grade six to getting a cell phone for the first time boyfriends breakups you name it they give me the material mm -hmm. driving a car going to a restaurant um, and now moving out on their own so they have given me so much material to work with and then taking that material and making it personal and tying it in i think one of my biggest stories is how my daughter encouraged me to take care of my own health and fitness and drive me to a better lifestyle mm -hmm. and how that lifestyle impacted other people and being able to share that story is uh, it's pretty remarkable and having that toastmaster platform and knowledge and training to to help me tell it properly mm -hmm. is it's, it's a good story to tell it is. You'll hear it one day, I'm sure. <laughs> Pardon? Sorry? I said, you'll hear it one day, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> so it's funny because often people think that stories need to be something like you went on a trek and then you ended up in a desert and then you fell off the mountain and, you know, like something really out of the ordinary. But the most relatable stories are the everyday stories, the ones that you're that you're getting out of your children. So it's beautiful. Um, yes. My husband too. I mean, we went on a whole skunk watch one time. That was an interesting story of uh, trying to evacuate the skunks from our house and the trials and tribulations of working with a spouse to evacuate skunks <laughs> is a story in itself, let me tell you. <laughs> And so, yeah, life, life just brings in those stories. And I think the biggest thing with stories is just make them real and make them authentic. Uh, yeah. People will relate to them because people have their own experiences and they're there and, and real, which I think is great. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. In 2012, you were a successful marketing director and a new active Toastmasters member by then. And you listen to your second boss. <laughs> so it's like, I'd like to ask you, what motivated you to start taking on leadership roles within Toastmasters? Because you could have just, you can do different things. You can go as an observer, like just visit a Toastmasters club. You can join and become a member. You can do nothing, just show up and have fun and then just go back on, onto your business. Or you can become a leader. So what made you start to lead? You know, 
it it's probably two things and if i'm being honest the first thing is probably the most relevant so the first thing i was working the toastmaster program and as i was going through the program it got to the point that said to become a distinguished toastmaster you need to serve as a, an area director and so it kind of forced me into that it was like area director and distinguished toastmaster or nothing mm -hmm. and i goal oriented and I wanted that distinguished Toastmaster credit. So I signed up as an area director and I kind of embraced it and thought, okay, what's involved in this? And I, you know, I read up, I talked to other area directors, I found out what I needed to do and I jumped in with both feet. And when I did that, what I started to see was the impact I was making by leading through people and being able to make change. Um, I will openly admit I'm very much a doer. I'm a doer in my home. I'm a doer in my work. And so now I can no longer do the work of 40 people. I have to lead through teams. And so that was a big challenge for me to be able to trust others and give them a task list and empower them to do it and motivate them to do it and when i saw the success i was having with it i thought "Ooh, i want to learn more and that year at the same time i had changed jobs and my new boss said tanya i've seen you change in the last eight months which was the duration that i had been doing this he's like i don't know what you're doing but whatever you're doing keep it up because you're making a difference and you're becoming a better manager as a result of it. And so the fact that he was seeing that and I was feeling it, uh, it just became contagious, completely contagious, where I'm like, I need to check this out and see where I go with it. And one just led to another and I bug my husband at the end of each year. I'm like, OK, I did area director. He's like, OK, we get our life back. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, I think I might go for division director. I might go up a level. Are you okay with that? And he's like, I don't see why I wouldn't be. Like, if that's what you want to do, go. And I do division. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go at the next level. Are you okay with that? And he's like, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, you know, he was a huge support in it because it is a time commitment, right? I have my job. I have my career. I have my kids. And now all of a sudden I want to give back and help others. And, and that takes time. Mm -hmm. So I was taking time away. I, I'm, a, I'm a believer, everything goes in buckets. So mm -hmm. I was taking time away from my work bucket, my family bucket to give to my Toastmaster bucket. And I needed to make sure everybody was okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, and as I did that check-in, everybody's like, yep, I see a change, you're growing, keep doing what you're doing. And that's what kept me going on the leadership track. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy that you did. <laughs> and it's funny it's a bit addictive it is a bit of um you know i feel like a bit of a druggie <laughs> with toastmasters because i'm so <laughs> passionate about it and the more i talk to other toastmasters members i'm not the only one we're so no. passionate about what it brought to our lives that we want to give back and then we start like harassing people to come at our club <laughs> we're strongly encouraging them not harassing them but there you go don't understand the impact it could literally change their lives and when I talk to some people and I still start struggle with filler words still, although it's much, I've improved a lot, but I speak to somebody, some friends and they're like, um, 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 and I got a few of them to join my club as members because I realized it was just driving me nuts. And I was thinking, by the way, you know, record yourself and listen to yourself talking. And they were like, oh yes, you're right. And that was a selling point. Both of them actually joined in to my club, but there's just so much. Now I just joined, like, a, I celebrated my one year in May was my first year and, uh, <laughs> So I'm really enjoying this journey so much. I even started like a whole YouTube channel out of it, mm -hmm. but I'm a VP of public relations, which, you know, it's a role and I'm enjoying it, you know, working in the executive. There's just so much um, that we can get out of this. Mm -hmm. And um, what's after this district uh, director, Tanya? <laughs> I have no idea. No, but I have what's no the, idea. What's the next title? I, I'm not even at the. the so. Last. <laughs> I, I have options. Um, so first of all, I serve as the immediate past district director. So I'm an advisor to the incoming district team and I'll be there to support and mentor them, answer any questions that they have and help them along on their journey. So that, that will be my default. And then after that, uh, if I wanted to continue on in the leadership track, I have two different tracks that I can take. I can go as a region advisor 
or as an international director. They are both different and I will evaluate and see where I end up. Now on the flip side, my boss is encouraging me to get into local fundraising for the Ottawa community because he thinks that all of the skills that I've learned in Toastmasters can make a huge difference to a local charity and he'd like to see me try that. So we'll see where we go. <laughs> Lots of things to do. <laughs> yeah. I guess you'll figure out what you know is more aligned with your mission, what you want. Yeah. And, yes. you know, having some downtime to reflect, I think it's always important, no matter what you do, to stop and reflect on where you're at. And what I'm really looking forward to that come July is to really take that time to, hey, here's what I've learned over the years. And there's been tons of stuff that I've learned and being able to help and support other people and, and get them moving through their journey has been a big joy and i think it just it'll be interesting to see where things go from here yes and then also you cause ripple effects whenever you're t how can i say you're inspiring one person or helping them become better leaders and then they become better leaders and the impact you have is huge oh that's such an an amazing point and you know it starts in the club level as a club level, you take on an officer role or even better, you get to be somebody's mentor and you work with them. And I will never forget the first time somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, Tanya, you need to mentor. Like our club has a mentoring program and you need to pick someone in the club and you need to mentor them. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, that sounds like more time commitment. I really don't have more time. And as I did that, I found I, I invested the time and I, I put the effort forward, but watching somebody else have their light bulb moment of seeing how a speech objective and matching it with, with a speech and a story and watching it come to life and watching them stand up there and deliver that, it's amazing. It is truly the best feeling in the world, seeing that come to life. Even, even more I've seen this year, as district director, I needed a full team of area directors and some people stepped forward and said, you know, maybe it was because they needed the check mark, but whatever the reason they wanted to be an area director. And then there were some areas that didn't have an area director. And I knew there were some people that were ready. They just needed that tap to say, you can do this. I believe in you. And watching them grow this year as area directors and knowing that they put themselves out there and they gave it their all and, and seeing that growth from the time I first had that conversation to today, it's once again, it's amazing. And to think that I've had an impact on that and I believed in them so that they had the strength and courage to do it is just outstanding. And the fact that they put themselves forward and they gave it their, their all, I think is just, it's remarkable when you see that full circle come around. Yes. Yes. And one last thing I want to add about that is that they're not getting paid to do any of this. You're not getting paid to do any of this. No, okay. no. Um, our currency is thank you. <laughs> like, that's, that's you it. Get, yes. Yeah. And then, and, and that's often a, a, it's a running joke. You've both, in my house and at work is so Teddy how much money do you get paid exactly and I'm like I get paid in pay raises that's what I get paid so I get paid in pay raises yes. and uh it's you know you do it for your personal development and if you invest in yourself it pays off later in life oh, yeah. and it comes around and yeah oh yes I have not seen any um, monetary um gain on my end but it's not none of the thing I'm, the things I'm doing is for the money, but the boost in confidence. Oh my God, the boost in confidence, how I can get my message across better. And it's only been a year. I have a long way to go, but I work, my meetings are much more concise and structured. I just even in terms of credibility, I meet yeah. amazing people worldwide. Like we have access to all the clubs everywhere yeah. in the world. So I know. I say, mm -hmm. But you say, you know, you say you don't get paid in money, but and then you said your meetings are much more efficient. And I remember one time sitting in a boardroom with, it was a non-Toastmaster presenting to a Toastmaster club. And she defined, she says, this boardroom table right now has $8,000 sitting at it. That's what it's costing me to run this meeting. If it runs overtime, 
it's going to cost me more. Mm -hmm. I need efficiently run meetings so that I'm not spending yes. X amount of dollars doing it. So we don't necessarily always see it coming in into our bank accounts, but we certainly money is time yes. and we spell it that way. So I think we see it in different ways. Yes, you're right. You're right. And also my presentations are a lot more entertaining because things I work for the federal government. Sometimes things are very dry. You know, those PowerPoints that are very, very heavily loaded with boring data. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody can read it at the same time as I listen to you. So everything is much more structured and people get it. I'm a, I've become a storyteller in my yep. meetings and people don't understand. It doesn't matter if you talk about economics, law or med the medical field. There's a way of making it exciting. So yes, I've received a lot of feedback. People love my presentations. Yes, so you're right. I, I do see, um, but again, yes, I, there's yeah. a huge benefit to Toastmasters, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of that, what are your best tips for someone who would want to become a phenomenal and memorable storyteller? Phenomenal and memorable storyteller. Uh, let's see. Uh, I would say the first one is the effective use of the pause. Make sure that you're getting that effective use of the pause in there. Usually storytelling, if you go through the whole story as fast as it is in your head, people can't catch up. So you want to make sure you're putting those pauses in there and you're, you're giving those. But the biggest one is tell it from the heart. Mm -hmm. You lift it or you felt it. Let your audience feel it with you bring that color commentary in. And it goes back to that speech where they, they told me that time to close my eyes and see a postcard. And I, I think the same thing, close your eyes and see that story, feel it. What did it look like? How did it make you feel? What, what was going on at that time? And when you can tell a story that way, you bring your audience right in there with you and they're seeing it and feeling it and hearing it with you. And I think that's the key uh, to a really good storytelling, but allow, allow your audience time to catch up because as much as you think you're going at a good pace, they are going much slower than you are. And you have to allow your audience time to laugh and digest it, maybe cry a little, um, whatever that emotion be, let your audience feel that emotion. And so often we have that fear of the silent pause of, it was so quiet. Oh my God, I, what am I doing? What am I doing? But it's good because people are listening and digesting before you move on. And I think that makes, makes a good story. Yes, I really, that's so beautiful. I really struggle with this. That's my main, because I, it, this is my slow down pace. Okay. I used to be like, <laughs> like people can really keep up with what I was seeing. I don't, I couldn't even keep up with what I was saying, but because my brain thinks very, very fast. And then it would, you know, I would, it was tumble out of my mouth, but that's one thing I've been um, working on. And you're absolutely correct. It's huge. Because yeah. people, they just don't have time to process. They have to be given a chance. Exactly. And yes. What would you like to tell someone who is extremely camera shy and says that they are incapable of speaking in public? Like, incapable. <laughs> We're all capable. You just have to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a matter of mind over willpower. Willpower? I don't know if I said that right. Mind over matter. And you just, you need to believe in yourself and baby steps. It's probably the biggest one. I remember my icebreaker and I wasn't prepared to do it. I, I delayed it as long as I could until one day they said, Tanya, you're doing it. I said, no. And they're like, it's four minutes about yourself. Go do it. It's not about having a structure and the right words. It's just about standing before an audience and speaking. And even if you don't speak, the objective is to stand before an audience. So just stand there for four minutes and do nothing else but get comfortable with that. And I thought, okay, I can do this. And so I, I put myself out there and I did. And at the end of it, everybody stood up and clapped and made me but it gave me that confidence to come back. And, and my mentor said, you know, do or don't, it's going to be over within four minutes. Mm -hmm. You'll survive it. We all survive it. 
and I'll feel better for it. Mm -hmm. And I think if people break it down into those baby steps and say, it's four to six minutes, I just have to get through that four minutes and I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I'll be okay. And that's, that's the hardest part. People, as much as they're shy about it, they're more afraid of looking bad or feeling mm -hmm. like people saw them bad. And what they need to realize is, it's actually admiration. When you see somebody stand up there and put themselves out there, it's admiration. It's not judgment. It's not negative. It's, hey, you did it. I can too. And that's where as much as you're shy and, and don't want to, you're probably motivating somebody else in the exact same situation. Yes. Yes, Tanya, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I remember my, my first icebreaker, well, my, my icebreaker, I was shaking so much and I messed up and, and well, I messed up. I just had a blank or whatever, but I just did it. There's a sense of pride when you're done. Like once you've done your icebreaker, you're mm -hmm. unstoppable. There's nothing you cannot do if you can get through that first speech. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Like the other thing I, I always look at as a mother, so I've got two daughters and as much as I'm shy and I don't want to do it, I don't want them to be held back. I know what it did for me feeling that way. And I want them to be confident and motivated and inspired. So I think as a parent, I have to lead mm -hmm. by example on this one, even if I'm out of my comfort zone. But if I make it a big deal, they're going to make it a big deal. And the schools today challenges kids to stand up and start doing presentations at a really early age. And if I make them at an early age feel like this should be a problem, like you should be challenged by this, mm -hmm. then they're going to go through life feeling that way. And I don't want them to. So if it means I got to put my big girl pants on and stand before an audience and say, okay, I can do this, mm -hmm. then that's where I'm at. And, you know, you do it for your kids so you can set an example for how they should be. Yes. And there's also a kind of youth program, right? For the young ones at Toastmasters? There is there's definitely a youth leadership program it's such an amazing program i had the privilege of teaching a youth leadership program one time again it went back to i needed the check mark in order to get my distinguished toastmaster but i learned so much that time and i think I even felt as though i motivated and inspired them and that felt good but ton of stuff then too, where I could see them going through it, where they practiced writing their speeches and got into it and came up and delivered it. And then the speech evaluator came forward and he's like, oh, it was awful. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what we do. <laughs> so teaching them how to give feedback was a great thing. And I think a skill that all kids can learn from. Mm. And the program itself is an eight week program. It's under 18 and you can create groups of any size and then reach out to the Toastmaster community and they'll, they'll come in and support your group doing it. And I think mm. it was one of the best experiences I had. I can't wait to do another one. Oh. Yes, that sounds really very, um, empowering is that the anyway very movie anyway i think it's wonderful to be able to touch those young lives had a new appreciation entirely for teachers after that let me tell you i was only there for 45 minutes eight weeks in a row and i thought oh my god these teachers you hear every day for eight hours like hats went off to them mm. at that moment yes definitely and they learned you're right it really resonated with me when you said the thing about your kids that uh, for the last 10 years they've been providing you with stories, but also they listen to us. My daughter, she's not, she's 19 now. She's not a Toastmasters member yet, <laughs> but she's been following me, listening to all my speeches and she could tell, she gives me feedback. She could, she's literally a speech evaluator. Mm -hmm. And just by listening to me and she uses those tips that she hears me talk about her, that she hears in my club meetings, because she hears, she's there around me. So she's able to use them in her own presentation. So it's great, you see everything. It, it goes around. I can get my kids to clean their room by using the Toastmaster speech model. Win-win. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, you're, well, you're a very busy woman. <laughs> you're the, the VP of um, 
at Business Alliances, as we mentioned, you're the district director, a mother and a wife. Can you share with us what daily practices you use in order to keep your mental sanity and to <laughs> accomplish all the things that you do within the 24 hour period that you're granted? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's funny, I'm busy and you mentioned 24 hours and there's this saying I heard one time that everybody has the same 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how you use it. And I, I do a few different things. Uh, fitness and health are, are two big important things with me. So I like to start my day off with a fitness routine. It might be boxing, it might be yoga, it might be strength training, or it might simply be a walk. But whatever it is, that first part of my day is mine. Uh, sometimes my husband will get out of bed early and he tries to like encroach on my time. And I'm like, go away. Like, I need to get this done. I, I like exercise, but not as much as I like sitting down and having coffee with my husband so he can lure me away from my plan easily enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, after I get my workout done, you know, I make lists. It's the only way I can get through everything I, I do. I have my household list, my Toastmaster list, my office list, and I've got my three different lists. I write them in the morning and then I write them out again at night. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's my morning list of what is it that I want to accomplish. And then I cross it off as the day goes on. And then at night I summarize and I start out, mm -hmm. but then I rewrite it again in the morning. And sometimes it may be exactly the same as it was the night before, but sometimes as you're sleeping and your thoughts are going, my priorities shift and my list gets rewritten based on the, you know what, I think I want to tackle this today mm -hmm. and it gets reshifted around. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay to do, to be able to prioritize and reflect. And then I go again. So yeah. workout, list writing, coffee, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the plan. Yeah. And, uh, and then the other thing I do is I, I listen to my body. I think I'll get working away and all of a sudden, you know, when you become not productive yes. and I think I thought, and I know my mind will go, Tanya, you got to stop, fuel your body. Your body probably needs fuel. So go get some, some protein, get some exercise in, get some food into it, and then retackle that problem and see where it comes out afterwards. So being able to listen to that and identify where it's at makes a difference. So true. Yes, I'll take some notes. I'm pretty organized too, because I do fit a lot in one day. And it always, I have journals for everything. I mean, if it's not in my agenda, if it's not written down somewhere, it's just not happening. It's not, yep. I even plan times to do nothing. <laughs> I, I do that too. And I've taught my kids to use my, I work off of my calendar. Everything is my calendar. My workouts are in my calendar. My activities are all in there. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter will want to steal some time with me every once in a while. So she'll book an appointment with me, which is <laughs> super funny that my teenage daughter has to send me a calendar invite to spend some time with me. But it's her way of saying, I want some FaceTime more than I've been getting. And uh, she puts it in my calendar and we carve it that time together. So that's, it works. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay. So what is the next tip for Tanya Hall? The next tip. The next step. Next step. Mm, uh, I don't no, I'm going to go for my third DTM. I want to get that done. Really? I'm working on chartering two new clubs. I'm going to get that done. I'd like to do a speech craft. I've never done a speech craft before. I think that would be exciting. A speech craft is an educational boot camp, if you will. It, it brings in non-Toastmasters into an eight-week experience to get to know what Toastmasters is like. And uh, I've got a couple of books I want to read, mm. and I'm going to dive into those. It's summertime. I want to golf a lot. I want to go to the trailer, spend time with my kids, and then recoup, and we'll see where the fall takes me. Yes. Oh, that sounds like a lovely plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> golf, restaurants, trailer. Golf, restaurants, trailer. That's that's my summer. <laughs> Yes. And reading, reading. And reading. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Great. So if someone in the audience would like to know more about you or connect with you, what is the best way? 
Uh, easiest way is my LinkedIn profile. So follow me on LinkedIn. It's Tanya Hall. You'll see my profile as Decisive Group and you can follow me there and I'd be happy to connect with you and uh, have that conversation and see where it takes us. Yes, great. Oh, we've made it to the end of the interview. <laughs> Let me share some of my main takeaways. If ever you have to deliver any form of speech, uh, use pauses. <laughs> Don't do like me, use pauses. <laughs> and tell it from the heart. Let the audience feel it, see it, and hear it. And um, you can do anything. Just believe in yourself. Take baby steps. All it takes, small baby steps. And if you want to stay mentally sane, prioritize your fitness and your health and listen to your body. And is there any last story you'd like to share with us, Tanya, before we part ways? I would say balance. Balance is probably a big one too. Is you wanna you wanna make sure that as I said earlier, you've got your different buckets, whatever they be, you know, you've got your work, your family, your community, your Toastmasters, your church, your school, whatever those buckets are, you want to make sure that they're, they're balanced. And you can often tell when you're not in balance, when one of them is stressing you out more than the rest is probably you're not you're off balance and you've got to re refocus that. And I think it's important to take that time and step back and reflect. So when you feel that, oh, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know what to do, everything is like the world is coming down around me, it's one of your buckets is out of balance. Mm -hmm. Figure out what bucket and then go from there. So um, that's, that's probably the big one. I love that. This is good timing because I was feeling very overwhelmed today. There are a few things I'm dealing with in my personal and professional life and um i love that yes i will do yeah. that i'll start as of tomorrow <laughs> there you go there you, you go really. <laughs> thank you so much tanya for your valuable time awesome thank time you. Thank you. you yes it was a pleasure yes it really was and dear friend at home or at work wherever you are thank you for watching i hope you're feeling as enlightened as i am <laughs> after spending this time with Tanya. And I will leave you with this. The power of your voice can change the world. Find it and use it. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.